Our final speaker, Gary and Bunn, the power of imagination. The power of imagination. Gary and Bunn. Everything has its season, everything has its time. Show me a reason and I'll show you a rhyme. Cats fit on a windowsill, children fit in the snow. Why come I don't fit in, no matter where I go? Rivers belong where they can ramble. Eagles belong where they can fly. I've got to be where my spirit can run free. I've got to find my corner of the sky. That song was made popular by the stage play Pippin. It's entitled Corner of the Sky. Every time I think of that song, my imagination runs wild. I think of all the things that I would have, could have, and possibly should have done. A famous author once wrote, the only thing that hinders our imagination is what we know. Albert Einstein said that imagination is greater than knowledge. And I wonder, at what point do we as adults lose the fervor of our imagination? As children, we play cops and robbers and our fingers are guns. I submit to you, the first Verizon wireless network can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? We use simple cups or cans as telephones. I have two young boys, and oftentimes they'll come into my and my wife's office and say, Hey, Dad, will you put this around my neck? I said, Boy, you better put that towel up before you get it dirty. They want to be Superman. Again, I wonder, at what point do we lose the fervor of our imagination? I recently read about a man by the name of George D. Mistral. Have any of you heard of him? He's the gentleman that created Velcro. As the story goes, George D. Mistral and his dog were coming out of the Alps. They had been hunting. And his clothing and the dog's fur were covered with burdock burrs. Grandma would call them cuckleberries. <laughs> and I began to think to myself, isn't that like life? Just when you think you're out of the woods, you bring some of the woods with you. <laughs> but it was only through his imagination that he was able to see a burdock burr, a cuckleberry, if you will, as Velcro. And I submit to you, it's only when you begin to see your problems as more than problems that you'll get the victory. I learned something on my journey. I learned that what's in front of me and what's behind me is not as great as what's inside of me. And I believe it's true for all of you. Say it with me. What's in front of me and what's behind me is not as great as what's inside of me. What's in front of me and what's behind me is not as great as what's inside of me. I submit to each of you, if we can only get back to the place that we see our fingers as more than just fingers, if we can see a cup as more than something that's half empty or half full, if we can see a towel as more than just a towel, we can go, we can do, we can be anything we want to be on life's journey. There were two young boys that were born into the same household one, an extreme optimist, and the other, an extreme pessimist. The parents struggled with what to do with these young boys because they, like many of you, many of us, who have more than one child, how did we have children at different ends of the spectrum? They decided they'd try an experiment in the pessimist room. They filled it with toys. The next morning, they awoke to crying. Oh! 
They rushed to his room to figure out what was going on. He was sitting in the middle of his floor crying. They said, son, what's wrong? You have a room full of new toys. He says, I know I'm going to break something. <laughs> the optimist. From his room, they heard yelling, woo, yeah, woo. They rushed to his room. And I hate to tell you what they had done to the optimist. They had filled the optimist's room with manure. They got to his room to see what was going on. Said, son, what are you doing? He says, I know with all this manure there has to be a horse somewhere. <laughs> I would like to challenge all of you tonight to remember three things. One, it is only through your imagination that you're able to reach your potential. Two, what's in front of you and what's behind you is definitely not as great as what's inside of you. And on your journey to find whatever it is you're trying to find on life's journey, remember this, there has to be a horse out there somewhere. <laughs> Mr. Toastmaster.